Hey, dude, come check out my new phone. It's super awesome. <laughs> Your phone sucks, dude. Oh, what? You got something better? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Gideon. Yes, Professor. Tell me the future. I do not wish to damage the timeline. Fair enough. Well, tell us something, I don't know, inconsequential. Yeah, let's do that. Of course. In exactly six seconds, you will fart. Ah, dude. Uh, that's probably just a mistake. Are you sure about that? Dude, seriously, trust me. I'm not gonna... Thank you, Gideon. You're welcome. Welcome to the future. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. Now, before we get into the show, I just wanted to remind you guys that June 20th is fastly approaching, so be sure and get those entries in for the 30k short film comp in. You can click the annotation on screen right here for more information if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But you should, because you're loyal. Okay now, if you paid attention to the opening, you know we've got our first full CGI character on the show. And that is of course thanks to this and many other requests. Sheep's Graphics asked, after a bit of back and forth just to clarify, for a Gideon hologram effect. And guess what? We're doing it today! But first off, I gotta say, this wasn't the easiest effect to pull off. In fact, it was one of the hardest ones I've ever done, mainly because I'm not the greatest 3D modeler or animator. In fact, this is the first time I've ever done a 3D character's facial expressions before. I ended up modeling the character in Adobe Fuse, rigging it with Mixamo's amazing auto rigger, then animating the model in Cinema 4D Release 17, and finally compositing everything together in After Effects. So what do you need to complete this effect after I told you all of that? Well, for starters, you need to shoot your actor holding something that Gideon's hologram can generate from. In my case, it was my Iron Man 3 Repulsor. And of course, film yourself talking or interacting with said hologram. You also need to grab the download pack below that features all of my model animations from a front and back perspective. I'll also include a base version of the model as a Cinema 4D file with no animations, but you should know you'll need at least Cinema 4D Release 17 to animate it. Cinema 4D Lite unfortunately doesn't have the functionality to do it. Now guys, I do know that my animation from the opening sketch isn't going to be useful for all of you, and I will work on some generic lines in the future for the model. But at the moment, I'm super low on time, and that's all I can give you at the moment. So let's giddy on with it, shall we? My god. Okay gang, I just wanted to show you a little of the process that went into animating the Gideon model. As it was very time consuming, as each characteristic of the mouth has to be keyframe animated using these post morph sliders. I ended up shooting reference footage of myself as you can see in the background, and I just tried to match my mouth movements as best I could. Which wasn't easy considering I've never done this before. Anyway, I hope to cover animation at some point, but at the moment I'm still learning it myself. So let's get into the tutorial. Alrighty, here we are once more and my comp is ready to go in After Effects. The shot we'll be focusing on today is where Gideon generates when I call her like so. So our first order of business is to track the area that she'll be appearing in. In this case, it's the blue part of my repulsor right here. So I'll select my footage layer and click track motion. Let's find a good track point. Here we are. We'll then lay the smack down on that play button and in no time you'll have yourself a nice track. We'll then head up, add a new null object, head back down, hit edit target, and select that null if it isn't already. Then we'll hit OK, apply, and OK. And that's our tracking done. So from there, before we bring in our Gideon model, we need to build the light that projects from the Gideon hologram. To do that, let's open a new comp, call it light, and click OK. The first thing we'll do is head up and add a new solid and hit OK. From there, let's head to effect, noise and grain and add a fractal noise. Now, time to tweak. First off, let's change the fractal type to smeary, the noise type to soft linear, smash that contrast all the way up to 245, collapse down the sub settings like so, we'll then set the sub influence to 39.8 and the sub scaling to 34.1. And just for good measure, I'm gonna change the sub rotation to 124 degrees. We'll then finish it off in the settings by hitting the stopwatch on evolution, setting it to one, heading all the way to the end of the comp and setting it to four. And finally, let's grab the ellipse tool up here and draw a nice circle mask around our solid. And let's check out a preview. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, 
what the hell is that? Well, stick with me, people. Our next step is to select our solid, right click and hit pre-compose. We'll then make that pre-comp 3D by toggling it right here. And from there, we'll hit R and rotate the orientation 274 degrees like so. We'll then hit S, unlink the scaling by clicking this button, and then key in these numbers, 18.9, 38, and 38. And lastly, hit P and let's set the coordinates to 960, 859.2, and 22.3. Now I know it looks like even more of a nothing, but it's about to change. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, stay up there, jump to effect, blur and sharpen, and add a CC fast radial blur. We'll firstly set the blur amount to 95, and then the zoom to brightest. And then grab our center point target and drop it below our comp, and bam! If we check out a preview, we now have our streams of volumetric light projecting out and looking all hologrammy and nice. See? Method to the madness, gang. Alrighty, that part's done. Time to import our Gideon image sequence, gang. So let's head up to the project window, double click, and let's find our image sequence in our download pack called Yes Professor. We'll then click the first image in the sequence, then head down and make sure that import image sequence is selected. As you can see, it is. So what are we waiting for? Let's click OK. So from there, you may notice that when you imported the sequence, After Effects has it listed as being 30 frames per second. And of course, we don't want that since it's 24 frames per second. So here's a quick tip. You can actually tell After Effects what frame rate you want every single image sequence to be imported as. So I'll show you how to do that right now. We'll head up to Edit, Preferences, Import, and when the menu opens, we can key in 24 frames in the Sequence section and hit OK. And that's all done. Every image sequence will now be imported at 24 frames per second. No more need for that interpret footage crap. Now, let's drag and drop our Gideon sequence onto the timeline. We'll also grab our light comp and drag that in too. And there we go. So for starters, we're going to turn off our Gideon layer and get our light all sorted. First off, change the transfer mode on that one to add. We'll then move it into place by using the position and scale controls and we'll get it where it really needs to be. That looks good. Once you're done, we'll parent it to our null like so. Alrighty one down. Now we need to do the exact same thing with our Gideon footage. So let's turn it back on. And just like with our light footage, we'll just scale it down and position it into place. And of course, once we're done, parent it to our null and change the transfer mode to lighten. If we check out a preview, you can see both elements are stuck to our hand and are working just fine. But now we've got to blend them in. So here's how we do that. Firstly, let's select our light comp, head to effect, color correction, and choose tint. We'll then select a nice blue from our Gideon layer, and that looks much better. We'll then duplicate that light comp twice more just to thicken it up a touch. Moving on, we'll then select our Gideon footage, duplicate it, select both, and hit T to bring up our opacity. We'll then bump both of those down to 45%. If you want Gideon to be a little bit more transparent like some people suggested in the teaser comments, you can always bump this down a lot lower. From there, we'll select the bottom layer, head to effect, blur and sharpen, and add a fast blur. We'll then key in a blur amount anywhere from 20 to 60 based on the scale of your shot. 44 works great for me. Now if we check out a preview, you can see it looks pretty decent, but we still have to have Gideon project out when she's summoned. So here's how we do that. Select all the light comps and the Gideon footage, right click and hit pre-compose, and check collapse transformation, it's that little sun icon here. This ensures that all of our transfer modes within the pre-comp work in this comp and don't default back to normal. From there, we need to head up, Grab the anchor point tool, this one right here, and move the anchor point of our pre-comp to right on top of where we want Gideon to generate from. Right here is pretty good. We'll then hit S, hit the stopwatch, and slam that bad boy down to zero. We can then move ahead, say, 18 frames or so, and then scale it back up to 100%. Next step, animating the opacity. Let's hit T, hit the stopwatch, and I might bust my opacity down to 85%, just to make my hologram a little more transparent. And then of course, head to the first frame of our comp and knock it down to zero. If we check out a preview, it's working nicely. Now gang, to blend the shot a little better, I'm going to add a lens flare at the base of our hologram. So I'll head up, add a new adjustment layer, stay up, head to effect, stylize, and I'm adding no light factory EZ. If you have optical flares or any other flare plugin, feel free to use that. This is just the one I have installed on my PC. From there, I'm going to tweak a few settings. I'll set the flare lens to alpha base, I'll move the flare in position, I'll then jump back to the start of the comp, next, 
I'll hit the stopwatch on flare scale and bump it down to zero. I'll then skip ahead those 18 frames and set it back to one. If you're moving your hand around a lot, you may have to animate the flare location as well, but my hand is pretty steady. Now I do cover flare animation in my Kylo Ren Blaster Stop episode, which I'll link below in case you're interested. Now before we move on, let's not forget we did just pre-comp all of those layers, so we need to re-parent them back to our null, like so. And just for the hell of it, I'm just going to have a quick look over it and see if it needs repositioning. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. There we go, much better. My final cherry on top is to add some depth of field. Since my hand is out of focus, Gideon should be too. Now here's where we run into a little bit of an issue guys. Since we used the collapse transformation option, we can't actually add any effects to that pre-comp or it'll just undo all the work we've done. So we're gonna cheat a little bit. Let's reopen the pre-comp and from there, we're gonna head up, add a new adjustment layer and then we're gonna head up, grab the pen tool and draw a mask around Gideon. We'll then head down, hit F, feather it at 25 pixels or so. From there, we'll head to effect, blur and sharpen and add a box blur. And I'm just gonna set it to 2.5, just for a slight blur, just a slight one. Now, if we head back to our original comp, you can see the blur is updated and it looks way better. Now, just to let you know, for any shots where Gideon is actually the focal point, you can skip this step entirely because she won't need to be blurred out. And if we check out her preview, that is another shot. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Hey dude, come check out my new phone. It's super awesome. <laughs> Your phone sucks, dude. Or oh, what? You got something better? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Gideon? Yes, Professor. Tell me the future. I do not wish to damage the timeline. Fair enough. Well, tell us something, I don't know, inconsequential. Yeah, let's do that. Of course. In exactly six seconds, you will fart. Ah, oh, dude. Uh, that's probably just a mistake. Are you sure about that? Dude, seriously, trust me. I'm not gonna... Thank you, Gideon. You're welcome. Welcome to the future. So guys, that's my take on Gideon from The Flash, and I guess Legends of Tomorrow, although she looks and sounds a lot different on that show. I wish I could have made some more generic statements for you to download, but it's either I do that, or work on another episode for you. And I don't have time to do both. Once again, gang, don't forget to submit those 30k comp entries to win some awesome prizes. Make sure you hit subscribe right there if you haven't. Check me out on all the social medias and whatnots. And I'll see you next week for a film London remix you guys have been begging for since I posted a poll on Twitter. And as always, keep learning! Oh, and in case anyone was wondering, that was a real fart. That, my friends, is called a practical effect.